Money and finances are a major cause of divorce and separation in relationships. So it's really important that you're on the same page with your partner as it comes to money. So we're going to discuss some financial questions on camera and we're going to see if we're on the same page after two years of dating. Hi, I'm Shane of The Well Five and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income and build wealth. We have a lot of money conversations. In fact, we did a similar video last year, which you can check out right here. And in that video, we were one year into our relationship and we discussed a few financial questions that were on the basic level. But now we're two years into our relationship, so we're digging a little bit deeper because a lot has changed. And we're trying to see if we're still on the same page when it comes to finances. So let's get into the questions. Actually, before we start off with the questions, I'm gonna have Mike Come introduce himself. Goodness, just... Because you know me, I'm Shana. But Mike. Right. Mike Mike Johnson uh, from Dallas, Texas. Uh, full time. I'm a quality engineer for Pratt and Whitney. Uh, we build and design jet engines, um, and I'm also a real, a real estate investor. Um, I flip properties. Um, I have rentals as well. So. Yeah. We met two years ago, or a little bit over two years ago, mm -hmm. on a dating app, and we dated for a little bit. And then we got into an official relationship. And I guess we still going strong. We still going strong, guys? <laughs> I, I would okay. hope so. <laughs> we all on YouTube with you. All right, so we're going to get into the questions right now. So if you're interested in this video, make sure that you hit the like button. Because we're about to go deep, okay? So the first question is, what scares you about money? Um, honestly, uh, not a lot at this point. Um, I think what used to scare me about money was, I guess, just feeling like will I ever have enough? Um, and I guess to a certain extent, you know, even still now, maybe I might think to myself, well, you know, how much is enough money to quote unquote retire? But nothing, I guess, really scares me necessarily um, about about money. So I really do believe that, um, you know, you can always get money. You can always apply what you have learned and, you know, you're a uh, entrepreneurship queen and you can always get it, so. Yeah, so I actually wrote down this question, but I was still sitting here like, what really scares me about money? Because although I feel like money is like, my mom always used to say money is the first thing to be done and money just goes quickly, you know, if you're not monitoring your money. But at the same time, like he said, I feel like you can always get money. And actually we had a conversation last year before I lost my job, actually the day before I lost my job, mm -hmm. and I was saying, I don't get why people are so, you know, like they have to have like several years worth of um, emergency funds because you can always put yourself out there and make money, especially in this economy. So I don't know if much really scares me about money. I mean, I am very driven to make sure that I have money, yeah. but um, I don't know if much scares me. Okay, question number two, what are your financial goals? Uh, what are my financial goals? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say my financial goals are to retire my mother. That's one of my financial goals. Uh, I also want it to be an option. I think I said this in the last video. Uh, for you know my wife, um, you know whether or not she wants to work, and so I want to be able to retire Bay. Um, you know, sometime soon, and retire myself and do real estate full time. So. So I think long term, my financial goals are really to just have um, wealth that will set my family up for future success and to, you know, have a life that I didn't have. And I feel like I have had, you know, financial issues in my family and things like that. And I don't want my future family to have that. I want to be able to support um, my family, like immediate family kids and also like you know parents and whoever else I can um, within reason <laughs> but I definitely want to set a trajectory for you know setting up well so I think that's my main goal and then along with that would be if I'm set up so well then I don't have to work or do things that I don't want to do that don't please me yeah. so those that I think that's the top financial goal yeah all right Question number three, what do you appreciate about my money habits? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say that you always budget. Um, you also, you know, one thing that I still struggle with to a certain extent, because I'm busy and it's easy to just eat out, but I feel like you rarely eat out. 
and that's where a lot of money uh, that's where a lot of people's money goes you know goes towards housing and also food so i think that you budget and you're more structured around your your budget and spending money Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that I appreciate about your money yeah. ha habits is that I think you take financial risk in a sense. Mm -hmm. So at one point you were investing in the stock market and then you were also, um, you also do, you know, real estate investing and a lot mm -hmm. of people do see that as, you know, a risky type of thing because yeah. other people kind of just, um, rely on like their jobs to just sustain them and yeah. might just do like their 401k and things right. like that and they don't look into other forms of investing because they consider it to be risky yeah. so i do admire that you look to other ways to generate you know income and wealth yeah. by investing in other methods so, makes sense yeah. okay question number four i got this question all right how easy or difficult do you think it has been to manage money in our relationship Wow, we get Kiki, you just Kiki, huh? Ooh, okay. Um, so I think it's been kind of difficult. Yeah. And so, um, just to give a little backstory, we moved in with each other in August of 2019. So it's been almost six months. Yeah, close. Since yeah. we've been living together. And he said that he would, um, provide financially when it comes to like groceries and and even I guess just paying the rent and stuff like that as well but specifically groceries and I think that has been a challenge for me and I think it might be something that I um, internalize because I like I was telling him the other day like I go grocery shopping and I'm like is he gonna think that I spent too much money or anything like that and so I am a little I don't know. I just feel uncomfortable knowing that I'm not contributing to the groceries you and don't that have to. and that he could potentially come back and be like, "Well, you spent too much," or it could. So it's more so like internally, I'm on pins and needles. But I can't really say that you do anything really to mm -hmm. make me feel like that when I actually analyze the situation. Gotcha. But I think that has been the difficulty. And I think the other thing when it came to groceries before was you were like reimbursed. And I'm not really about the whole reimbursement life, even when it comes to jobs. Mm -hmm. I feel like put up the money <laughs> if you're really serious about it. But then we went to you giving me um, a credit card to be able to pay for the groceries. And I think that has worked out a little bit better. So I don't feel as you know weird about asking for reimbursement because i can't think it comes off as like i'm begging and that's what that was my issue at first so with the reimbursement thing i guess yeah so what do you think <laughs> um i think it's been easy to i think i guess manage money um in the relationship i don't have too much to add okay <laughs> i guess all the issues just on my end but okay all right question number five how has your view about the distribution of money in our relationship changed? Um, it hasn't changed. It hasn't really changed much at all, to be honest with you. Uh, not to be short, but um, I think it's been constant. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Watch changed you. really. Um, I would say that I do think I want to have my own sources of income to be able to contribute. And so I don't want to be in a situation where I always have to depend on him for our livelihood. And so um, I think even if someone, if he were to retire me in a sense or anything like that, I would still want to know that I had income coming in. And I don't know if that's a thought that I had before. Part of me has always been you know, into entrepreneurship and very driven in that way, but at the same time, in my mind, I was like, well, somebody gonna sponsor the whole life. Like, <laughs> but now I don't really think that way, but yeah. Good, that's good. Um, so what type of wedding do you want? How big extravagant do you want your wedding to be? How big and how extravagant do you want your wedding to be? Um, I kind of go back and forth about that. Mm -hmm. um, I have thought about what the guest list would be on my side, and I can't imagine it being less than 50. And so if it was supposed to be equal with my future spouse, then that's already a 100 person wedding. 
and I don't know what technically constitutes a small or a large or medium sized wedding but I think that adds up 100 people at a wedding adds up I don't know I go back and forth because I don't want to spend a lot but then I do want a lot of people from my family to come now like I said that's about 50 people alone yeah so we can go down to the courthouse and have an after party with as many people uh, as we need uh, I'm, I'm definitely good with that so so I told him I wanted to do an after party kind of situation. He was like, ah, oh, I don't know. Now you want to do an after party? As I've always felt like that. Don't stuff for the, for the <laughs> I know don't, you don't stuff for the people. Don't stuff for the people. Well, okay. Um, do we talk about the cost of getting married? Um, we have. Yeah, we talk about the cost of getting married. Um, In what way? Like as far as like having the wedding, I guess. So this is a different question. So do we talk about the cost? Uh, like associated of being married to somebody? Is that your well, question? I guess, yeah. How uh, how are you interpreting it? Uh, the first way I took it, which the was wedding the wedding. Stuff? So, okay. yeah. yeah, we definitely have talked about it, not in detail. Like we haven't mm -hmm. put a budget on it or anything like that. Right. Um, but I guess we talked about like not spending a lot of money going to the courthouse or going doing a destination wedding to right. like not spend a lot of money. So we talked about it, but not you know in concrete numbers right. um but i think another way this can be taken is like the cost of getting married like i have student loans mm -hmm. i don't know if we really oh, you have we have talked about that like yeah we so have. what what's your perspective tell the uh student loans are student loans uh, i'm not um you know i'm thankful to you know i played football in college and i paid the bills um but you know miss phd um who did go to school on the gates Scholarship, um, still had to take out, you know, some some loans that I don't think for what eight to ten years, what hmm. ten ten years of schooling. <laughs> it was some years, it was uh, more than ten, I think. <laughs> ten or eleven years of schooling, I don't I don't think uh, it's a lot necessarily. So you know, you love someone, you you know, take on all of them. So, but if it was like three hundred thousand, <laughs> you love someone else. I'm wow. joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. If you have that, if you have that much. Uh, that amount of student loans, somebody out there will love you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, do you want kids? If so, how does the number of kids you want? Uh, how has that been impacted by okay. money? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. No, oh, I asked you. <laughs> you did. I see. Okay. Um, so, at one point, I wanted four. Um, and I think it does, like, the number of kids I want does get impacted by money somewhat but I think that I will be wealthy so I'm not too worried about it but I think more so like what impacts the number of kids that I want is like my age in a sense like I don't think I'm too old I'm 30 I'm turning 33 this year but it's more so but it's more so about like I have a lot that I want to do and I don't know if I'm going to be able to have kids by the time I'm ready to have kids. So I think it's more so like that. And I'm not interested in doing like IVF or anything like that. So I'm kind of on like, we'll see what will happen. <laughs> Although I originally wanted four, I'm kind of like, it might be none and I'm okay with it. Yeah. So um, I, I go back and forth on this myself somewhat, but I, I'm okay with not having kids myself. Uh, if my wife wants to have kids. I'm definitely okay with that. I don't want any more than two though, uh, for sure. Three, maybe if we have like two girls and I want a boy, or you know, two boys and she wants a girl. Okay, three, but you know, the, the goal is to have no more than two kids, but I think money does impact it for me. Um, I, I think I make a decent living for myself and I feel like I can barely afford myself. And so to have, you know, a whole family and support, you know, uh, family back at home, maybe, and also a wife, myself, kids. Um, I think that's how people can get stuck on the hamster wheel if they have too many kids, I think. I do want to carry on a legacy, uh, but, you know, if Shana says, hey, I don't want kids, then I'm not, I'm not necessarily, um, you know, married to having kids, so. Okay. All right, so what kind of values do you want to teach your kids about money? Um... I, I do want to teach them the value of a dollar. I do want them to grow up knowing what, you know, knowing that, hey, you know, uh, hard work was, you know, put into, you know, these assets that we'll have. We'll have, you know, Lord willing, a lot of assets and multiple streams of income. Um, and I, I don't want them to necessarily grow up, um, 
you know, being a privileged, that stereotypical privileged uh, lifestyle. But I do want to also let them know that money isn't everything. I think that's that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. so. so I think I agree with you. Um, definitely don't want them to be you privileged. You think you agree. You think well, you okay. Agree. Wow. I have a, an additional thing, but I definitely don't want them to be privileged. Like my kids are going to go to public school, but we will have, you know, money to fund, you know, things that they want, but they're not going to... They're going to be humble about the money that we have and also know that they need to value the hard work and everything like you said. But at the same time, I also want them to have like a spirit of entrepreneurship so that way they can continue to be able to build wealth and also be in control of the money that they're able to generate and not feel like they have to depend on other people. Because um, we had a conversation about it. You felt like you never grew up knowing about entrepreneurship in a sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And But I grew up in that you know household like my dad owned his business so I want my kids to also be fueled and self-driven to have entrepreneurship goals for sure yeah. so a uh, follow-up question to that so uh, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind to your, your kids um what kind of legacy do I want to leave behind I don't know I think it's just a uh, uh, a legacy of hard work and then also of charity because I would imagine that we're gonna be wealthy we are gonna be wealthy and so I don't want to like a lot of people have helped me out like for example like Bill and Melinda Gates scholarship like that helped me out tremendously because my education would have costed like four hundred thousand dollars without them and so i would like to be in a position where i'm giving back to others and that they can learn that we don't have to squander everything right. um, because you know god gives us everything we don't have to like hold on to stuff and it's a blessing to be able to be generous so right right got you uh i would say the exact same thing and you said your kids i said your kids our kids you know what i'm saying <laughs> Oh, that ain't a giggle box too. <laughs> key, 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 key. But no, nah, um, yeah, nah, I would definitely say the exact same thing. Okay, so do you expect to support your parents or other loved ones in the future? Um, I do expect to uh, support, um, you know, some loved ones. Um, I, like I said, I definitely want to retire my mom. You know, my dad, retirement is on the block for him uh, next year. Um, but, you know, I still want to be able to help out um, if, if, if necessary, so. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, I will have to support um, some loved ones. I'm really happy to be able to do that. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, I think it is um, something that a lot of us, you know, millennials and especially like black people or people of color, um, like my parents are immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so that tends to be kind of the, the way of life. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't feel like it's a burden that's placed on me, but I just know that it's something that will happen and that I want to do as well. So we're going to continue to have financial discussions because it's really an important part of relationships and we encourage you to talk with your loved ones about finances as well because it is one of the key factors in your relationship staying Definitely. together Definitely. and so if you are interested in learning more about me and the things that i talk about on this channel make sure that you're subscribed and i'll catch you in the next video i thought we was going deep <laughs> i think we did go deep nah, we... <laughs>